Welcome everybody to Eye of the Serpent Tarot for another Pick a Card reading. Today's Pick a Card reading, as the title said, is, is for those of you who are caught in a bit of a dilemma around a difficult choice. And so the analogy or the, the kind of stereotypical sort of way that this is sometimes described is where you almost have a good angel quote unquote and bad angel sitting on either of your shoulders and they're whispering in your ear and they're debating it though for the purposes of this it's not necessarily that one is a bad option or the one that you shouldn't do and it's just all about temptation and, and not what's good for you it, it is genuinely looking at where a positive or a negative response to something have almost an equal balance and it's hard to work out which way you should go and it came actually from me dealing with the same thing myself and looking for sort of answers around this and without going into the detail of the issue I was talking to a friend yesterday and I was saying to them that I felt around a particular issue that, that I, I don't read for myself generally because I, I don't feel I can be objective enough so I do tend to go to pick a card readings and so forth of readers that I like and there's quite a number of those on tarot on YouTube tarot tube and I will look at sort of readings where possibly I can get an answer for that but what I almost always get around this particular issue is a dual answer. I get one half of the reading seems to be saying let something go and the other half seems to be saying no no you've got to stick at this thing and whatever it might be. So it's just really interesting that's what I keep coming up against and I think that might be where a lot of it has to do with personal choice but it is tricky because there's a very strong sort of indication in both directions. So I thought I'm surely not the only person who's dealing with that. So why not actually literally do a reading and look at it like two angels on our shoulders one which is is debating the positive end of something in the sense of yes do it or stick at it or yes leave it or whatever it might be and the other that is debating the opposite so not necessarily angel and demon but more like two angels but uh, as I say I called it good and bad because that's the stereotype that we tend to sort of think of when we visualize it so that's what we're talking about today and we're going to have a look at what are the energies around those two angels then we're going to look at what each of them are saying using tarot a little bit of a overall spirit the divine adjudication on the debate and then we'll look at sort of wild card issues that could be coming up other energies around it and we'll finish with yes no questions so have in the back of your mind around whatever this issue is some yes no questions and they can be very broad it's I do yes no in two different ways one is where it has to be about something you have control over the other is where it's sort of broad and it can be something that you don't know whether it's going to happen or not or how somebody's going to respond you can do any of those sorts of ones in this one that's the way I'm going to do this particular yes no and I'll explain the structure of it at the end of the reading when we get to that so just bear in mind that after all of it, there, there are going to be some questions. So, so have them ready if you already know or formulate them as the reading goes ahead. So as always, the important thing is to, to tune in to the right reading or readings. If you want to go to more than one, you might have more than one issue that you're dealing with. So by all means, go to as many as you feel drawn to. I'll put down the numbers for the people who like that as part of the reading. But this time, instead of using tarot, I'm only going to use one tarot deck for the main part of the reading and another tarot deck for the yes no questions and there's actually a third one that's just being used a bit like an oracle in this but I'm not sort of like toggling between different decks so what I thought I'd do is that I would use the angels among among us oracle and that will be part of defining the angels we're talking about or the energies around that and, and it's also to help you choose. So these particular angels will not come up in the reading because I've already intuitively shuffled and chosen the angels that will. So these were some of the ones that were not in any particular reading. But hopefully the energy, the, the things that they cover, the colours may help you choose the reading or you may go by numbers or whatever. So for the part one, we have Archangel Shamuel. I'm never really sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. It's, a, it's an archangel about love, healing, self-love and self-esteem. For I don't know if that's what will come up in these, by the way, but it's just to sort of help you sort of work out what energy you're drawn to. For pile two, we have Archangel Zagkiel, which is about transmutation, mercy, and is very much connected to the crown chakra. 
Pile three is Archangel Jophiel, which is about joy, radiance, inspiration, creativity, all of those sorts of things. And pile four has Archangel Ariel, which is about the the sort of guardianship of the earth, the environment, abundance, those sorts of issues. So maybe those energies will help you draw the archangels involved, the coloring, as I say, whatever it may be. When you know what reading or readings you want to go to, the timestamps as always are in the description box below and I'll see you there. Welcome part one to your reading. So these cards here are meant to be the quote unquote positive angel the sort of yes sort of energy around the sort of issue that you're dealing with whatever it may be and these are meant to be the negative or the different approach the debate and so forth again negative not being bad it's just going the different way so why i wanted to start with this is to get a sense of whether or not you're in the right reading because if these sort of connect in some you know real way with what you're trying to struggle with then you'll know that you've come to the right reading so we have two different um, angelic energies here talking to you. One is literally an archangel. One is a god. That does not necessarily mean that a god trumps an archangel, so you just go with this. It's just the different energies around it. But it's interesting because what I think this is fundamentally about is a choice between collaborating, working with others, staying in a social group, staying in a relationship, something like that, and dealing with how to be an individual within that, deal with any sort of conflict that might be associated with, but being able to still have control over with, with ye, the creatrix goddess here, and the weaver here, your own destiny, what you want to do. But it's very much around friendship. It's around the emotional connections to others and so forth. So I think that the Archangel Hanael is talking to you about how you can stay within a group, within a relationship, within a community, within an industry, within a workplace, something like that. And that it is possible to do that and still individuate as this card is talking about with the Ten of um, Air, because in, in the Dreams of Gaia Tarot, this operates more as individuation than sort of the, the, the normal Rider Waite Smith sort of Ten of Air. So this is about that. And then with the Five of Fire or Five of Wands, it's individuating when that could sometimes cause conflict, but so that you can create what you want to do. So there's certainly a sense here of do I do I collaborate? Do I stay with others? Do I stay in a relationship? That sort of thing. And the Archangel Haniel is saying to you that She's saying two things, I think. Firstly, she's saying that there is a way through. You can, if you want to, you can still weave your own fate, but within a group and deal with what are probably likely to be fairly minor conflicts in actual fact. But you can also go very much to your intuition when you're not sure about particular friends, particular relationships, particular directions and whether they get in the way of your creativity. You can go to your own psychic ability, which is strong. You'll have a good sixth sense for the people that you should be with. And to be aware with moon cycles that some of your feeling about whether you whether you feel that you can be separate but belong or whether you feel that you're in some sort of a battle is being impacted by things like moon cycles by emotions. So this angel is saying to you, look, yes, there's a bit of a struggle going on in some aspect of your life with other people and you really do want to create who you are and individuate this could be anything from you're now wanting to leave home and you're wanting to get on with it and it's, it's sort of the issue about you know can you financially afford it yet are you ready yet have you done all the study you need to do or it could be later in in life it could be is this the right job to be in is this the right sort of friendship circle to be in any of those sorts of things and there's one part of you that's not sure because you're really starting to establish who you want to be but on the other hand she's saying you can there is a way through this and your own sort of sixth sense about people will help you do that and and really the battles are going to be less than you think so that's the side that suggests staying with some form of group relationship or something along those lines whereas over here with Thoth which is all about wisdom and so forth the sense of hero which is resilience the emphasis on thought and you determining and making your own reality with the queen of fire or effectively the queen of wands as the self-actualized person and strength 
I think that Thoth is saying, yeah, that's fine, you can do that, but equally you have the ability to just stand on your own. You have the wisdom that you need. You, you have a very powerful mind and you can bring things into being through that mind. And you have the resilience and the strength to do this on your own if you wanted to. You do not have to rely on those people over there. It's nice to have friends. It's nice to have a community. But really, you're able to create your own reality and your own brand and whatever it is. So, so it could be a classic decision about do I stay in an organization or do I start my own business? And so each side is saying, so if, if this side is saying staying with the group, you're worried about being able to stand in your truth, there is a way to do it. And over here, the other side is saying, look, if what you're really worried about is do I have everything I need in my kit bag, then the answer is yes, you probably do. So it's an interesting, it's a classic sort of dilemma for exactly this sort of reading where it, it isn't that one is better or worse than the other it's really more around what are the true things that you most value you know, is is it that you most value ultimately that sense of community and and therefore archangel haniel saying to you you can find a way through any of the kind of conflicts or other people wanting to to tell you what to do you can find your way through that or do you really, are you really a truly independent person where even if it means breaking with certain friendships or going against the grain, you really do have the strength to do that and you really so much want to be your own person and someone new and original. So it kind of depends on those sort of values. So let's use the tarot and let's ask what each angel is saying in a bit more detail. So we're going to start with Archangel Haniel. So the one that is talking to you about the capacity to be within groups and still be your own person in whatever sense or in a personal romantic relationship while still creating your own self rather than being subsumed by it, whatever this might apply to. What else is she saying to you? Okay, she is saying that you have a tendency here with the equestrian of water, which is the uh, effectively the knight of cups reversed and the ace of wands reversed, that you do have a tendency sometimes to keep harmony, to keep love, to keep good relationships, to suppress a bit of your own creative fire. And she is saying that you sometimes put more on that than you need to. With the Ten of Wands reverse, it's like you took on too much of a burden and she's suggesting taking that burden away because there is something material that you can do with effectively the Knight of Pentacles and there is enough around you in terms of fellow feeling, similar sort of vision and so forth that there is something real that can be created. So if it's in a relationship, there is a sense of real stability here and, and a, a similar way of looking at things ultimately. That if you, however, have suppressed some of who you truly are to keep the peace, then she is saying that you can let that burden go and you can be more who you are. That again, any real battles associated with it will be much less than you expect because there is more that is stable and secure than you think. But she does say, that you do have a tendency, as I say, to suppress your own self if it comes to, to keeping harmony and stability where you are, or if you think you could hurt someone's feelings. I think you're sort of someone who very much within a group will keep quiet about your needs if other people you feel are more sensitive. So you're very strong. This is, this is part of your dilemma. Your actual strength and resilience makes you sometimes give too much to other people. So this is about getting things in balance. And this is, again, also about understanding when, as I said before, there's moon cycles, there will be times when you're more susceptible to this, when you feel a bit overwhelmed by the emotional side of it. She's saying, just be aware that's a cycle and that passes. And you've seen it. You know, you go from the ace to the ten very quickly. It's, it's more about the emotional stuff and what you draw in from other people as well, too, because you're very empathic. But her argument is that, 
if you look at the reality of whatever this is, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a career, whether it's your place in a community in some way, there is more that is stable, loyal, and you can move with, and more that is in agreement than in disagreement. And you can be more individuated and more in control than you are giving yourself credit for. So at this point, she is saying that you are underestimating the material strength that you have. So let's see what Thoth is saying to you. I think Thoth is being a bit sneaky, <laughs> a bit sneaky in the argument that you're hearing on the other side, because I think that he is actually taking part of Hanael's argument and turning it back on her, because I think he is saying here with the moon, she is, she is saying the, you know, the feelings around this are just patterns and you can move past them if you have faith in that and you can sort of keep the even keel. He's saying the moon is connecting to your wisdom and you're much stronger emotionally than you think. So, but, but if you don't understand how strong your psychic ability is and how strong your understanding of the esoteric is, the wisdom that you have, you'll underestimate yourself and you'll tend to be reactive and responsive rather than being directive and making your own decisions and sitting in this queen of fire energy. So you, you default to the five of fire, like, oh, what's the, the debate? What's the issues? What's the consternation around others? When you should be going, this is who I am and knowing you have the strength for it. So I think he's been listening to what haniel has been saying and decided, well, there's a different perspective to that. He's also saying that there's something about what Haniel is suggesting to you and what you are thinking about in terms of groups family, loved ones and all that sort of thing, where you learnt a lot in childhood around the values for this. And, I, and he says you learnt a lot about how you needed to put other people first, you needed to follow the dreams of others and of the group, and that there was almost like a moral principle around that. He says you need to unlearn some of that. Some of those things from your childhood and from what you've studied or learned are not working for you. You need to take your ability and wisdom now to make the Wheel of Fortune work for you. And it is in something a little less conventional. You need to walk away from some of what feels like stability and own your strength. And if you do that, you start to really create your being. So his argument is that some of what is making you feel the need to be within the group or in the, the relationship or whatever it is, is stuff that you learnt as values when you were young. And he's saying to self-determine yourself and to create your own world and to use your strength and wisdom, unlearn some of that and think about what is the future you really want, even if it feels like it's not as immediately secure for some reason. So Thoth is clever, which is hardly surprising given what he is arguing about, but Haniel is very connected to your emotions. So I think it's sort of, this is the mind arguing and this is the heart arguing. And part of your decision will be, which do you follow? Which, which is the most important to you? So that's kind of interesting. Let's see what other information there is. Let's look firstly at just an adjudication with three cards from spirit from the tarot deck about where they sort of like on a broader the all sits in this balance which again it does not mean you have to do what this says it's just it's just a perspective above the two debaters the two the barristers so to speak this is more like the judge but it's it's not a final decision it's still your decision okay so I think <laughs> I think that, that the all is having a bet a bit each way here. I think that they're saying you do have to make sure that you're happy emotionally, that, that in the end, whatever you bring in materially or anything that you want to build and grow and grow from the Ace of Coins through to the King of Earth or the, the King of Coins, so the full cycle of what you want to create for you in the world, needs to be something that is emotionally resonant to you. But possibly the way to work out between the two is what one will give you the sense of having created your own material reality best. If your own material reality requires 
compromise and working with the group because that's inherent to it, then that's the way to go. If your own material reality is more an individual thing, then it's possibly knowing that in the longer term you can find happiness, but first of all, you have to build materially who you are in the world. All right, let's look at the two wild cards that were also under the Tar uh, the Archangel that brought you to this reading. So they're just two energies also, just to sort of consider in thinking about the yes-no here. Okay, so firstly we have in the Foxfire uh, Oracle, we have coming of age. So I do think many of you, Many of you may be leaving home for the first time, or if not, it's like there is, is a maturation process operating here. It is, what is it that makes you feel that you do stand firm in who you are? And both sides give you that option, so it's not telling you which, but it is it is a maturation thing. It's like, if if you are drawn towards the, the group because you don't feel mature enough to step out, then this is suggesting, think about the fact that maybe you have come of age. If, however, part of coming of age was to understand it isn't all just about you, it is also about the community, then that may take you in a different direction. The other thing here is that we've got distorted desire. So it says conscious desire rarely satisfies the unconscious need driving it okay so there's something that you need to go into and this is picking up the moon energy and both the both sides are calling to you from the moon energy around what's unconscious here and i think it is like it is unconscious as to whether or not you are driven more from relationship or more from individuation and and the mind and what, what is really driving this? Is it coming from a space of growth and maturation? Is it coming from a space of fear? Is it coming from a space of, of emotional connection that you're looking for? Is it coming from something that was programmed into you? So they're just things to consider in relation to this. All right, let's get a little bit of symbolic and astrological advice for you on this. So first of all, just pure astrology. Sagittarius, trine. Okay, I'm going to see what planets they are in a second. Sagittarius picks up the fire energy, definitely, and it picks up a sense of freedom. It, there is some astrological tilting towards this side, I think, towards the queen of fire to some extent. But it is also connected to the tarot card of temperance. So there may be, may be a middle path between these two, which is another thing to consider. Though to me... If you went the middle path, you're almost choosing this side because I think that's what Haniel is saying. There's a middle path. You can be individuated, but you can be with people without it getting too much in the way. Whereas Thoth is saying, no, you have the strength and if you really want to maximize, you need to stand on your own two feet. So, so I do wonder whether with the freedom side of Sagittarius, whether it is tilting a little bit towards that. Try and suggest, and this is on both sides, that it's going to be easier than you think. Haniel is saying... Even if you stay within whatever the situation is or you go towards a community or whatever that option is, that's going to be easier than you think. And Thoth is saying you already have all the sort of particularly intellectual and conceptual firepower you need. But let's just see what planets are associated with that trine. So I'm going to just shuffle and then deal out till I get planets. And I instantly got Jupiter, so that's good. And the sun, oh wow. Look, what I would say about this is neither side is, is wrong. Whatever you do, in some ways, Paul, one, whatever you do, you can't lose. Really, you can't lose in terms of the outcome. You're going to be successful in whatever this is, successful relationships, successful business, successful academia, whatever it might be, you are going to be successful because with the great benefic and with the sun around your life path in trying, that's about as lucky as you can get. So there's a lot of the universe, you know, is really behind you in this and really either choice is going to be fine. And, and as I said, that's kind of what makes it a difficult choice. <laughs> but, but I think the one nice thing is that once you do settle on what you do, you'll still end up with the goal that you ultimately have. You'll still be able to. So if you decided to go just on your own, 
you will still be able to have strong relationships, strong connections and all that sort of thing. You just are really standing in the I'm creating this sort of energy. But if you decide to work with other people, then the creation energy is collaborative and any sort of debates around it probably feel to me more to be the engine room of, of true creative collaboration. So either way, it's okay. I know that doesn't really necessarily help in making the decision, but that it is suggesting that either is okay. So let's get from another deck that has other astrology sometimes, sometimes symbols and archetypes as well, what other information might be helpful for you. Air. Energy. June moon so the June moon is interesting because that suggests you've already gone a fair way towards you creating what you want creating the relationship you want the career you want the business you want the creative product whatever it might be that this tussle between collaboration community and individual pathway there you can enjoy some of that and maybe just in enjoying how far you've got might start to give you an idea which which angel you should be listening to certainly it's suggesting that action is going to be called for and you will mentally process it that doesn't surprise me thoth feels like wisdom thought here there you you will always process that way so there, the, the, even though there's a highly psychic energy you need to process it through your mind your mind needs to be convinced then you can take the action but there's a key in looking at how far you've gone and understanding maybe what has brought about the successes you've had so far as a way to help to decide between the two Okay, so now we're at the yes, no portion. So I hope that's been helpful to this point. But as I said, we're going to do three questions. Each time I'm going to shuffle and then pick out a card. If the card is a major arcana, the answer is yes. If it is a court card, the answer is no. If it is a in the minor arcana, a cups or a wands card, the answer is yes. And if it's pentacles or swords, the answer is no. And so I'll say whether it's yes, no, and then from what card comes up, any further information. So while I shuffle now, can you please think of the first question and then I will lay out the first answer. Okay, so the first answer is yes, because it's a major arcana and it says there's something new to do. You are, you are, it's interesting with that energy, you've come a reasonably far way and you've already got some of the prizes and the benefits of what you've done but there's a whole new direction that you can go in and it's a very positively aspected one so if it was literally between these two then you know the answer is yes whichever you were thinking about but whatever else you might have been asking the answer is yes okay think of question number two okay and the answer is yes again and we have the Wheel of Fortune, so it's very fortunate. That's picking up, that is picking up what, um, no, so what Thoth was talking about, the Wheel of Fortune. So there is definitely that sense that you are creating your own world and your own fortune and you are on the rise, I would say. So the answer is yes to whatever your question is. One more question, Pile One. Please think of it. And the answer is... Yes. Wow, you've got three yeses in a row. With the two of wands, it suggests it is still a choice associated around this. So whatever the yes means to you, there's still maybe a, a subset or choice for it. It may also be if you're asking about collaboration or friendships or people with a common viewpoint, then it would definitely be saying there's at least one other person, maybe two, that are very much in line with what you are thinking or wanting to do. So but otherwise, I think it's a choice. It has a creative element to it. It has to do with you expressing yourself. And the answer is yes. So I think overall, the answer is yes. Whatever you do. That's why I say the interesting energy of here. You could literally go either way. But I think really maybe the, the real clue is there with the June moon. It's what have you succeeded at and you can enjoy and celebrate now. And what does that tell you about the fundamental two different sides of the debate because you can't lose whichever way you go but you really do want to go towards the one that gives you the most of what it is that you truly value and treasure so I hope that that helped pile one I hope it was a fun reading 
If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about how this worked for you. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pole 2, to your reading. So these cards here are one of the angels and their argument about your issue. And these cards are the other angel and their argument. And I think that this topic, if you come to the right reading, and one of the reasons I wanted to sort of start this way is, is to make sure that people do feel, yes, this is the right sort of debate that I'm internally having, it has got something to do with relationship. It may be literally about whether or not to take a relationship to the next level and whether or not that in some way is is going against maybe how you're trying to to become an individual you know trying to be different and not necessarily follow society's rules around this maybe your partner actually is a little bit more conservative or conventional and wants wants that sort of security and so forth it could be that quite literally it could also be breaking free from the the societal structures or the things that you've learned from childhood or from an industry that you're in or something like that to be much more versatile much more free and much more grounded in who you actually are in a very healing way a way that you feel gets gets rid of the debris of where you haven't felt you fitted in in some way as opposed to going well actually I really want to become more who I am by submerging with another relationship or with other people and being able to find both a wildness and a wisdom in what I do, but also a sense of order. Like I don't want to completely break with convention. I just want to find the way to be myself within a more conventional relationship, conventional career, whatever it might be. And Archangel Raphael here is arguing that there is a healing process that you do need to go through. You need to become more, more connected to who you are as opposed to what you've grown up learning or the environment that you're in or the relationships you're in. There is a self in you that is trying to be healed and come out and show its versatility. There is literally a death and rebirth cycle going on here. You are transforming. And so Archangel Raphael is trying to support you and heal you and keep you comfortable with that while you start to ground that energy and make a decision about some material thing in your life and I do think for many of you it is about a relationship but if it's not it may be around career or creativity or something like that or even just that sort of sense of individuation when you break away from family traditions or something like that and understand there's a lot more for you involved in that and really really connecting to your intuition around what is healthy for you what is a healthy way of being in the world as opposed to an expected way of being in the world archangel michael over here isn't saying to you that you should give up this self at all he's not arguing well no actually there's rules and we follow the rules even though archangel michael as the strength of god is is sometimes in a kind of warrior type scenario sort of looking at the rules of the divine or whatever the reality is that here he's arguing for clarity and for protection and truth around what you do so getting the balance right it's he's saying that you have the wisdom with Sophia the knowing to be able to to do this it's like here there's a, almost a sense of self-doubt a burgeoning new self coming through but how do I ground that how do I make that real he's saying you know you can but you don't have to throw it all out you actually can have the relationship as well too you can actually find a balance of wildness and order between these cards in this relationship or in whatever environment you're in at the moment you you don't have to transform completely is what he's saying Raphael seems to be saying there's almost a complete cycle of transformation to ground you to who you are and for you to really understand all your potential Archangel Michael says you've got plenty of potential and ultimately you know it you don't have to doubt that you can have the relationships you can have the wildness and you can have the order you don't need to shift as much so this really is between a very big shift in who you are how you express yourself how you relate and almost an incremental one so step by step using your wisdom but not losing things in the process so that's what they're, they're saying to each other they're kind of debating the terms and the timetable of a change they're not debating uh, whether or not the change or whether or not what's coming up in you should be submerged neither is saying that they're just saying there's there's different ways of doing this and there's different costs 
you know, like there's, there's the revolutionary energy and then there's the, as I say, incremental but nevertheless more balanced change. So it might be a matter of timing for you. It might be a matter also of whether you feel in the environment you're in that are really you have to make a stand about being really different, even if it costs, or whether you can compromise. So it just depends on what the situation is. So what we're going to do is we're firstly going to put out a line of tarot cards for what Raphael is really trying to say, what his cause, his debate, his argument is for you, and then we will put out one for Michael as well. So firstly, give us a little bit more detail, Spirit, on what, what Raphael is trying to say to Paul to. Okay. So Raphael's debate or argument about why this is actually requires a lot of healing and a lot of change, the kind of bigger approach, is that he's saying that, that you have sat for quite some time in emotional discontent. You are not feeling happy with where you are at the moment, but you've allowed yourself to lose your courage because of valuing the conventional and valuing what you do have. Like it could very well be if it's in a relationship, the relationship is has things that are going for it, but it's you're almost feeling like you're settling in some way as well. And maybe that's not good for either you or your partner if it's a relationship, if it's around friendships or a career or something. You have kind of allowed yourself to settle for less than what you want emotionally because of a fear of the consequences of losing out materially. This might be why Gaia is coming up as part of his energy around you, the grounding energy. I'm also getting, like, it's a very specific thing, but I'm getting for some of you, there may be an environmental issue with Gaia there, Raphael, death and rebirth and so forth. He, you may be someone who has a very strong cause around the environment and, and you're not happy with how things are going at the moment. So that's why something really major and really becoming an icon around that might be required. That's very specific, but I just got it, so I wanted to say it. What he's saying is that if you let go of some of the conventional way of being things, you will find you will move much more quickly and you won't be as controlled. I think that Raphael is thinking there's something in this scenario, this relationship, this career, whatever it might be, where you are subtly being controlled. I don't think you're, it may not even be deliberately. If you're in a relationship and you feel that you have to submerge some of your emotional needs and what you really want to be true to yourself, to make the other person happy, to not, to not you know, hurt their feelings or something, then there might be almost a subtle, a subtle energy going on in this relationship where it's, you know in some way it's their way or the highway even though they haven't actually articulated it or you fear that that's the case. Raphael is saying that freedom needs to be freedom from the influences that aren't true to you and freedom from a sense of settling and that, that if, you, if you listen to Michael over here, chances are you'll settle. Whereas if you really burst forward, then chances are you'll go through the, the, the process of change. You'll see how versatile you are and you'll see how you can reground yourself. Okay, so what does Michael say in response to what Raphael is saying? Oh, that's funny. I'll tell you why in a minute. So it's really, the reason I said it's funny is that the tower reversed is, is the typical card of incremental change. And that's what he seems to be arguing. He's not arguing that you shouldn't change things. And indeed, there is something that both agree on, that there is some sort of subtle intellectual pressure on you, whether it's in a partnership, whether it's in career, whatever it is, that suppresses some of your, your courage and so forth. But he says, you, if you keep on keeping on with the queen of air there, you can win this argument. You actually have everything that you need. That's you know, the, the sort of Sophia energy, the sort of wisdom and so forth that you have. So, and the intuitive wisdom linking with a very clever mind. So he's saying, look, that's fine. You don't, and again, the chariot, it's not time to make major changes. Like he's, he's very much arguing that there's a lot that can be 
can be still worked out with this, that the key thing to understand is that you have been, to some degree, just as Raphael is saying, suppressed in what you really want by somebody else's agenda. But you can shift that. It is possible to keep that. You don't have to throw it all out. So, okay, hope this makes sense to you. What we're going to ask now is for the divine to adjudicate. So if you think of those two as sort of celestial barristers, we want the judge to weigh in. Not to tell you what the answer is, but from their perspective of looking at both arguments, what would they, what information would they give you? Or would the divine give you? Okay, so I think the divine is saying that the material outcomes of this are the thing to concentrate on with the king of earth there. So if it's a relationship, it's what is the material experience of that relationship? What makes you feel grounded? And it could be something where you can balance both structure and wildness and, and come up with that kind of creative energy that is not only about grounding and, and stability, but also about growth. Or it could be that it's tilting very much towards this side. Having said that, I think the divine is saying what you need to be aware of is that you're quite tired dealing with this. You need some time out. And it looks like you're getting lots and lots and lots of opinions, not just from the two angels sitting on your shoulder, but from everybody. Or maybe you're spending too much on YouTube or too much on the internet in general, you know, sort of seeking out information. All the answers are within you. It's what makes you feel sovereign to yourself and what makes you feel that there is a stability that works for you. Again, I don't think the divine's tilting one way or the other, but it's definitely saying that all the answers are there for you. And, and both Michael and Raphael agree. Michael says you have the wisdom. Raphael says that you can ground yourself. So I think the divine is going, yeah, I, those arguments from opposing counsel, absolutely dead on, but you need to take a little bit of a break before you make the decision. So even in, even in watching this video, take it on, think about it, but, but don't yet make a decision till you feel grounded to make it. All right, so let's have a look at a couple of cards that were also under the uh, Archangel that brought you to this reading that are, are kind of like wild cards. So they're just sort of other energies, other things that might tilt one way or the other if you contemplate them. So we've got beneath the surface and misalignment. So misalignment says miracles become normal once we face all of the aspects of our life in the same direction. And this is talking about under the surface. All right, this definitely suggests, and this might be why We've got the seeker of air reversed as well too. It might not just be looking for lots of answers all over the place when the answers are really within you. That you need to go to beneath the surface. You may need to find out certain things, particularly if this is around a relationship and what the other party would think if you went through a major change. And so you actually get the information that you need. And I think also beneath the surface is that there may be a kind of an on your way, a kind of a feeling of being a bit stuck and not quite happy, but really go underneath and work out what that's about. Is it really about whatever this question is, or is it something else that you've assigned to that? Because something is not quite aligned. Whether it is a relationship where there's a power dynamic and you have to work out, can I shift that and still keep the relationship? Or whether it's you really wanting to know what you want emotionally, because this is very, even though Archangel Raphael is about healing and is, is, therefore has quite an emotional energy to it, it's also a very earthy energy. And with Gaia there, but this is also about going into the heart. And the, the side that had the heart coming up really was uh, Michael's side around the, the, the two of cups. So love is important and what you want out of love is important with this. But going beneath the surface to work out whether or not where you are at the moment in that can be aligned or not may be your answer. All right, so let's get some astrological advice for you around this. New Moon and Saturn. Okay. All right. So New Moon is about seeding, planting what you desire. There's very much this feeling of the environment around this and around the material and so forth. But 
that definitely says there's an opportunity to do something new. The question is, is it is it a completely new species of seedling that you're creating or is it a new version of something that already exists? So I think that's that is, is an energy, though, towards the new, towards moving towards the new. But whatever it is, you need to think about what is going to be stable in it. You need to think about what will last the distance. With Saturn there, Saturn is about longer term things, wisdom, all of that kind of stuff. Maybe a little bit of a tilt towards what Michael is saying here because of Sophia. But there is a completion. See, it's interesting because the tarot card with Saturn is the world. So it's a completion of one cycle and a new cycle here. But it should be a cycle that you think you could do the long haul. So if this is around a relationship, one of the things you need to work out is, is this a relationship that I could see myself in 20, 30, 40 years from now? If it's around a career, a similar thing. There is, there is a longer term issue at stake here. Okay, so let's use another deck that also sometimes has astrology energy, sometimes has symbolic, uh, archetype, all of that sort of thing, just with some other information for you, Pile 2. Siren. Sun. And the July moon. So this is interesting and may tilt a little bit again towards Michael's argument, I'd have to say, because the sun is your life purpose and where you're going and who you are. And the July moon is about repairing and working with what you have. So there might be a little bit of a tilt there. This, this may represent a siren call, like the chance to be completely free and completely yourself compared to something that might need some compromise. Equally, with the siren, I think it makes me think a lot about this below the surface because that looks like a mermaid or siren as well. So there is the siren call, I think, of your heart. And it's, it's really a balance between your heart and your life purpose. And then does that mean you can repair things and move on with that getting that in balance? Or does the sun require you to follow a call of a much more more true to you heart, like without compromise? Because this is what this really feels like. It's do you or don't you compromise on something? Okay, so with all of that said, let's go to the yes, no part of this. So this is when I do this type of yes, no, you can ask any type of question. It can be what somebody else might do. It could be something likely to happen in a particular time frame. It can be anything. I do two different types of yes, no. Sometimes I do ones that are more about things that are in your control and it's just what yes and no feels like. This is more a direct yes or no. And what I do with that is that when a major arcana card comes up, it's a yes. When a cups or a wands minor arcana comes up, it's a yes. When a court card or a uh, swords or pentacles come up, it's a no. And then I have a look at what the actual card says for a little bit of extra information. So what I'd like you to do now as I shuffle is think about your first question. And then I will tell you by pulling the top card from the deck what the answer is. Okay. The answer is yes. We have the hermit, so that is that going beneath the surface. It's going deep within. This is a this is a philosophical and spiritual question as much as anything else, and and that will help you decide whether or not you have to do a complete overhaul and complete transformation, or whether you can incrementally work with whatever this is. So that there's something about introspection, even if it is even if your question was the, wasn't this ultimate question, but a subset of it. There's something about introspection and inner knowing, but the answer is yes. So you think about your second question. Okay, and the answer is yes again. And I think with judgment, it is saying yes. And whatever this is about is very, very, very much one within your choice. It is your judgment. It's not the judgment of others. Though if you were asking about the judgment of others, then I think whatever the yes is, it, it's going to be clear and it's going to be seen very quickly because judgment tends to be a decision that is seen quickly or that you need to take quickly. All right. And the third question to close out the reading, please. Think about that now. And the answer is yes. 
because you've got a wands card. And it's interesting, the wands card you have is the four of wands that suggests happy homes, happy families, happy relationships, cause for celebration, friendships, good team environments. So the, whatever the question is where the yes is there, it has something to do with that. So even if you're asking will this cause disruption in my friendships and the answer is yes and it's saying yes but there there is still a good element around this a good feeling around it so i hope that that helped you in making this decision and and the the debate from the two um, archangels was helpful for you i hope you enjoyed the reading if so please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so and if you care to share in the comments i'd love to hear about it beyond that i hope to see you in future readings welcome pile three to your reading so these cards here are one angel or or person energy talking to you this time commander ashtar on one shoulder with one debate or argument for you and this is the other one with Merlin on your other shoulder so it's interesting they're not angels but they are powerful archetypes and energies for you and I've got to say it's very interesting this one I think that the people who've come to this reading if you've come to the right reading and the reason I want to lay these out in this way is to make sure that this resonates and it's the right reading for you but I think for you, you are you have a real sense of a cause. It's quite likely you may be a star seed or a light worker or something like that. Certainly very developed in terms of spirituality, knowledge, capacity, and you're very, very brave. But I think what's going on at the moment is you're trying to do, trying to work out the best way to use that energy. And this could be in any part of your life. It could be around friendships, it could be around career, it could be around your spiritual work it could be around as I say literally a cause and the two different ways you could do it and the two debates around this one is about going out into the world like literally some of you might be interested in things like space travel and so forth with, with Commander Ashtar but this is very much around a bigger than you type of way of looking at things bigger than the environment that you're in bigger than the world we're in or at the very least worldwide potentially compared to local you very much get messages you're very much channeling i think from that kind of interdimensional level and there's something i think that you're looking to reclaim or bring back for yourself and for others because you're definitely there's a heroic energy to this and an innocence to it so it's like these two together is is that thing about fools walk in where angels fear to tread but you don't fear and that the child in this deck a bit like the fool is not it's not saying it's foolish it's just saying you're very brave you have a sense of something, a purpose that is greater than yourself, a mission that is greater than yourself. You're getting messages from Phoebe here as well too, that you are a channel for something. But you want to do action in it in some way, reclaim that connection that you have for yourself or reclaim something for a group or a community or your family or a loved one. This is, this is definitely the option Commander Ashtar is saying, you have a bigger than you purpose here. And really, you're meant to be the hero and go out and do something new and exciting. And whether it's in your career, as I say, relationships or whatever. But you're, you're here for a purpose and you've got to get on with it. Thanks. Over here, Merlin is saying, well, yes, because you are very, very developed in all of this. There's no doubt about that. But this is sort of the, the option where you feel like you have to prove it in a way. You've got to get out and do something with it. You can't just have the ability and sit in your room and contemplate and, and somehow have that help the world. You've got to get out and be the hero and do something in some way in whatever this particular thing is. It calls for action and it calls for being seen. Merlin is saying, actually, no, you can trust in your ability. You can be in solitude. If you wanted to choose to follow a very ascetic spiritual path it would not be a selfish thing it would be a different way of bringing your knowledge and wisdom and energy to the world you have a lot of wisdom and there's a lot of energy here merlin is saying educate yourself keep educating yourself more as a memory i think to remember things than that it's new to you but the more that you do that the more that you meditate contemplate do something on that individual level the more that you are going to if you trust the more that you are going to raise the vibration in a sense around you and contribute to the world that way it's it's an interesting thing spiritually because on one hand 
on one hand, this argument over here says if you have spiritual gifts, you should use them and use them for something greater than yourself. And that requires action. This argument says that just the sheer act of the spiritual pathway helps raise the, the vibration of all. So it's very much the sort of meditative Buddhist sort of feeling. This has a feeling like almost Buddhism, whereas this feels more like King Arthur or, or Don Quixote or something like that. There, there's the, the two different things. One says you are your actions. The other says that your energy and so forth contributes on an almost telepathic spiritual thing. So in whatever way this works out, as I say, whether it's as literal as a choice about spiritual path or whether it's whether or not you do a very community based or a very academic way of looking at something you are going to be able to contribute either way and each is arguing for the benefits of their side so this side commander ashtar is arguing that just getting out and doing it is how you reclaim who you are you are going to get the downloads you need you'll have the information you need at the time and it's your kind of combination of heroism and preparedness to do the new that is going to do the most for you for your relationships for the world Merlin's saying well actually it's good to really understand what you're doing get all the sort of like knowledge as well trust that you are getting what you need and sometimes that's going to require solitude you can't be out there being the hero all the time so you really need to if you want to really manifest bring the alchemical outcome, become the magician, you need to really concentrate on your own personal development, not so much on saving the world. So it's quite a specific sort of argument operating in this particular reading. So if that resonates, stay. If not, maybe check one of the other readings out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use tarot and we're going to look for the argument on either side think of commander ashtar and merlin as opposing counsel in a court case at the moment they're they're doing their closing arguments so to speak so we're going to start with commander ashtar first with what he would be saying to you why he would be arguing towards the, the hero journey as much as anything else Okay, so he's saying you've got all the information you need sort of psychically. You don't need to be spending all this time reading the books and so forth. In fact, the degree to which you just focus always on the facts and like uncovering more and more and more of the mystery, the less, less emotional outcome you get for all this effort. In fact, there's a lot of effort that you could waste on going down rabbit holes, he says, you know, trying to learn all the different creeds and all the different ways of doing things and so forth. And it's not going to get you anywhere. You have many options, but you just need to take action. And you can be unusual and you can be new with that because you do have the, the real core here, which is the heart. And the heart can go in whatever direction it needs to go in for the Seven of Cups. That's going to mean more to you because you are connecting psychically with messages. You are meant to sort of go forward and do something with that. And you can reclaim it because you've already done it before. I think there's a side of him that's saying, you don't have to spend all this time you know, cracking open the book, so to speak, because you've learned it in other lifetimes or in other dimensions or whatever. It's kind of a waste of time to be, to be worried about the academic side of this. You just get on with it. You know, that's, that's what you're here for. Get on with it, is what Commander Ashtar is saying. You, it's almost as though he's saying you constantly worry if you're ready, if you have enough information, if you understand it enough. If you were, for instance, a tarot card reader, it could be, do I have enough knowledge of the tarot now to do this? And Commander Ashtar is saying, yeah, get on with it, <laughs> basically. You'll get the messages. You know, get out there because there's something re really heroic and helpful you can do. Whereas Merlin might be saying, you know what, you're going to feel more confident if you have a lot of theory behind you. So let's see what Merlin's closing argument is to Commander Ashtar. Okay, so Merlin's saying... <laughs> 
right from the start with the hierophant, like you know, he's leading out right from his core thing. He's saying don't underestimate the importance of the traditions and so forth. That that's your bedrock, and that any spiritual person, person with a cause, anything along those lines, or even it, it, it's not spiritual, it's more scientific, for instance. It's not just all about the, the sort of exciting new technologies and science. It's also about understanding theory and practice and making sure you know you can repetitively show what you do. There is, there is value in higher learning. Don't listen to Commander Ashtar over here who just wants to get on with it. You do need to make sure you have the grounding and you're not quite there yet with the Seeker of Earth. That's like the page of pentacles so it's like you're not quite at the point where you've got all your sort of like material pieces in place and that's what's making it hard for the decision it's almost as though Merlin is saying it's if you actually did a little bit more within your solitude you would find the piece of information that would then make it possible for you to make the real decision about whether you're more a kind of a spiritual academic or you're someone who acts but you can't make that decision yet because there's something you still have to learn and don't be too tempted to just want to be free of all of the the sort of academic side of things or too tempted to go towards just what your friends and people around you want to do and so forth there is value in the solitude there is value in the study so both are arguing, one is arguing you're there, you have everything you need. Merlin is saying even the fact that you're having a difficulty with the decision is because you still need a little bit more on my side. So it's a clever argument from Merlin. Let's see what the judge, the divine, would weigh in on these two, you know, having listened to the two opposing counsel's arguments. What would the divine say? The divine would say, you know what, <laughs> you're arguing about whether or not to be a hero or whether to be a, a academic or spiritual leader or whatever it is. You're arguing about whether to act or whether to sort of keep studying or, or keep learning. But you're, you're actually not looking in the right place. Like neither of these angels are really, all these entities are really getting to the core of this. There is some pain you are seeking to resolve. And it's about relationships. So you can't you can't be completely on your own. It doesn't mean you can't spend time on your own to study, but you can't be completely on your own. But you do need to understand that whatever is pushing this, this feeling of wanting to be a hero and that reclamation process is because of an unresolved pain around relationships in some way. And so it's almost as though through whatever this is called, spiritual thing or whatever, you're looking for the way to reclaim your heart get relationships back into better balance and it might be the divine tilting a little bit more towards action than solitude but but i think the divine is saying that don't act before you've really got to the core of what that this is so maybe to help that let's look at the wild cards that were also under the archangel that brought you to this reading so these are just meant to be energies that are a little bit kind of left of center in all of this that might help you make the decision We've got follow the signs. And the eternal gatekeeper, acknowledge, assert, and protect what is right for you. Okay, so I think that's about that's about not letting either side of this rule you. It's working out what it is to you emotionally. There is something about this reclamation process, this trust process about your own territory and your own boundaries. Even if you are looking at doing something that is a cause, there is an importance in making sure that your boundaries are clear and secure and following the signs this see it says it you're getting messages you know we are getting the sort of wisdom and stuff coming through with Merlin there is there is that there will be signs for you so for instance if you were literally deciding am I studied enough now to do this then if you sort of saw lots of signs that are around study academia books and so forth it might be a sign there's still something to find. However, if you saw a lot about travel, action, heroes or whatever, it might be a sign to go to the other side. So I think that that the wild cards here are saying make sure you're clear on your own boundaries in either decision and then follow the signs. So maybe to help with a little bit of signs, let's see what astrological energy is around this for you. Opposition. Okay, so we'll look at the, the, 
planets for that and Leo. So Leo, Leo is very loyal. Leo's Leo's very much this side of the, the coin, I have to say. Uh, it is it is that I'm going to be the hero, I'm going to be seen, I'm going to be out and do things and so forth. And the tarot card with it is strength. So it's certainly suggesting if you decided to act, you are in a stronger position than you think. Whether or not Merlin still has a point and there are some nuances that would make you even more effective is another matter. But, but you are feeling this quite... There is quite a pressure around this decision for you, whatever this really relates to, with an opposition. There is There are two opposing energies that need to be brought into balance. So I'm just going to shuffle and deal out till I get the planets that this opposition represents. Got Uranus, okay. That doesn't surprise me with these energies. And Venus, yeah, see... The divine knows what they're talking about. It's all got to do with love, change, revolution, what you love, who you love, what love means, what love should be accepted, whatever it might be. There's something about love in this and about transformation and change. But, but, but it may indeed be something to do with deciding about whether there is the need for, for action, change and revolution and, and a shift of how you love or whether your natural tendency towards wanting to be in a revolution and be the hero needs to be tempered with love. It's going to be one of those two things, I think. So let's have a look at some other information for you that comes from a deck that has astrology, has symbols, has archetypes, all that kind of thing. We'll see what other advice spirit thinks is worth you considering. November moon. Mars, there's that action. <laughs> and Gemini. So I would say, although you're still in two minds, and you, you very much do value academia, the mind, and so forth, I think if you're tilting in either direction, you're tilting a little bit more towards action. November moon is about confronting what needs to change. And that feels that heroic thing, and Mars feels like action. So I think I think at the moment there is a little bit of a tilt more towards doing something rather than constantly contemplating it. But having said that, with that Gemini energy there, you will always be bringing this very sharp mind to bear. And Gemini is very versatile, so there is always the capacity to have a bit of both, a bit of both operating here, but to use that to fuel your cause and action. So. Given that, let's ask the three questions. So there's two different ways I do questions with tarot. One is where it's only questions that you have control over. So it's a yes or no is more around the energies of what that feels like than what you should do or what the actual answer is. I'm not using that way here. I'm using a very traditional yes or no. So you can ask whether somebody's going to do something. You can ask whether about timing. You can ask whatever you like within a yes, no outcome. And if there are major arcana card is if it's a major arcana card or a minor arcana cups or wands the answer will be yes and if it's a court card or a minor arcana pentacles or swords the answer will be no and we'll also look at what the card is to see what other information there is so i'm just going to shuffle and while i'm shuffling can you please think of your first yes no question okay so the answer is no Whatever the question is, we've got to know because we've got the Seven of Swords. And with the Seven of Swords, there's more information required, some negotiation, some balance to be required. It could also be saying that there's something around this where you need the information because you're not being told all the truth and all the facts. And the interesting thing, that may be picking up part of Merlin's argument, depending upon what your question is, because the child energy here with the hero would not necessarily pick up if they were getting the wrong information but the merlin wisdom would be saying there's something that doesn't feel quite right here make sure that you have that first so there's something about this question that has to do with having the right information at your disposal okay the second question please think about that and the answer is yes Yes, definitely, but there's some delay or some different perspective needed even to the yes. So if, if it's is something going to happen, it might be yes, but it will take a little bit longer than you expect. If it's should I do something, it's yes, but you really need to kind of come at it from a different direction with the hanged man there. Or yes, but it may require some sacrifice as well with the hanged man. 
Okay, and let's close out with question three. So if you could please think of question three. And the answer is no again. Two of swords. So no, because you it's it's a difficult decision, it's a difficult thing, or there's a difficult decision associated with it where you don't necessarily again have all the information. So this is why I think you've got the, the thing. In reality, I think you are going to tilt towards action, but I think Merlin has a point. There is some extra information that you need to kind of access once you do that, whether it's academic or whether it's just about whether you can trust certain people, then you can move forward and you'll have the different perspective you need to, to move forward and, and do what you want to do. But there's, yeah, there's a little bit of, a little bit of listen to Merlin, I think, but not necessarily forever. Merlin would probably have you have you looking into the details in the academia forever and, and really just valuing the, the spiritual sort of ascetic sort of path. Whereas I think you are more in line with Commander Ashtar. You are more the hero. You are more uh, somebody with a cause. So that I think is where that kind of lands. I hope that that resonates for you, Pile 3. I hope it was helpful. I hope it was a bit of fun. If so, please like the video and subscribe. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, I hope to see you in future readings. Welcome, Pile 4, to your reading. So these cards here are one side of the argument, one angel or energy. And in your case, it's not archangels. We've got a saint and we've got a god. So Saint Bridget's argument here for you. And then Horace's argument for you over here is the other side of the coin of whatever this internal debate is. And in each of these readings, I've said I want to, wanted to do this part of the spread first to get a sense of what the core type of debate is going on so that you can work out if you've come to the right reading and if not, maybe go and look at another one because it's important that the, the core part of this debate makes sense for you for the reading to, to resonate. So what I think the core thing is here is between... It's all about self-trust, actually. It's all about what you believe in terms of of how to make your decisions and how to be in the world. It could be playing out around relationships, even things like gender preferences and and sort of love preferences and so forth. That's a possibility, particularly with the masculine feminine energy balance there. But it could be anything. It could be how to creatively be in the world it could be what your career is it could be a particular relationship where you're trying to determine what aspect of it is going to work or if there's a particular way to be in the relationship but the thing about the difference between the two is that saint bridget is saying that the core and the key to doing the right thing to getting this cleansing energy of ocean to to be able to to really enjoy your life, enjoy whatever this is, have the positive outcome, is in surrender to your heart and to, to be not so worried about whether or not what you see is real. This card here with body and mind is where we can find it hard to sort of connect our body and our mind. And there is a little bit where these two agree with each other about that, but it's how you deal with it that they disagree on. So in this one, St. Bridget is saying that you should go to your passion, you should go to your emotional options and your emotional depths and your intuition with the seven of water here and the fiery, passionate growth energy that is around her. But that is by surrendering to the heart, to the, to the passion and so forth and not worrying so much about whether or not what you see is entirely real. That by surrendering, you bring a cleansing process and in a sense almost shows you what the truth is. So if this was a decision about a relationship, do I jump in? Do I know the person well enough? It might be, she would be probably saying yes. If, if your heart is connecting to it, surrender to that, have the experience rather than worrying about how real the experience is because out of that you'll learn and know what to do. If it's a creative project, it might be as you can only really get the outcome you want if you stop worrying about the details and you surrender to the feeling of it. So she's all about passion, fire, growth and so forth. Horace over here, however, is saying, yeah, that's all fine and dandy, but the, there is something here around the internal balance for yourself and how you see yourself. This is actually going to be very key to how you see yourself and your capacity for self-love. And he thinks to get the clear seeing, to deal with this problem over here, because they agree on this problem in a way, is to have the right perspective, the right intention, and to be very, very grounded. So it's all about sort of earthy outcomes. We've got 
the the goddess Papa Tuan Uku. I may be pronouncing that incorrectly, but that's about activating by connecting to the earth frequency. And we have the three of pentacles, which is the foundation there. He's saying that it is in material things. It is in what can be grounded, what can be built, what seems to be secure. And what deals with your own internal differences, the male and female side of you, the, the side that wants to act and and create and the side that wants to nurture, all, all of those things, it has to do with self-love. And he's saying don't rush into this because if you aren't seeing clearly in whatever this is, you may in fact damage your sense of self or you may change yourself too much to fit in with whatever the requirements are of this decision over here. You need you need to make sure that this in a very grounded way in this 3D world brings you into the balance that you want. So he says that's all about understanding this issue you can't it is an issue about what's real but he's saying you need to ground it and work it out by what is materially true whereas Bridget's saying nah it's all about the heart it's all about emotion it's all about passion that's what you should be guided by because the water of that energy will cleanse it anyway and so so it's between going with your heart and your passion or going with your sort of intention and the material grounded outcome that and as I say, Horace is saying the reason this matters is that not being really clear about your intention and what you want to see out of this could damage your sense of self-love and balance if if you jump in without not having without having enough information. So I think for many of you, it's probably around a relationship, but it could be around a creative project. It could be around a job. It could be anything. He's saying check the fine print and make sure it's going to be what you want materially. She's saying, hey, if it feels good, do it. Okay, so... Let's see what their arguments are. Let's imagine that they are opposing counsel in a court case. And we're first of all going to hear from the tarot from St. Bridget about what her closing argument is, and then we're going to hear from Horace. So firstly, Spirit, show us what St. Bridget wants to say to argue her case to follow the heart and to allow the sort of watery flexibility of that and the surrender to cleanse away and get to the truth. Okay, so it's very interesting, firstly, that this whole argument is topped and tailed by the power of the air, the power of the mind. And what she is saying is that you have been very much influenced and maybe someone who does live very much in your mind. In this body and mind thing, you may very much always defer to what is your mind saying, but it's a trap for you. She says it's a trap and it's dimming the sun. It's dimming what you could do, be, and so forth in the world. It's dimming that sense of optimism and, and so forth. It's like you're the sort of person who, if you go into your mind, you can come up with the 10 really good reasons not to do something while your heart is still yearning for that optimism. She's also saying that it's been learnt, you've been taught this, probably in your family or by sort of really sort of influential people around you, friends or workmates or whatever it is, depending upon what the situation is, you've been taught about the way to emote and so forth and not to disappoint other people. And so it, there's something like that. You've trapped yourself in a theory. That's why she's saying, is it too much in your in your mind? You've really got it. Even though in a way she's agreeing with Horace that the body is part of this, she's saying she thinks that it's about getting rid of and cleansing these emotional patterns that you've sort of been taught because they've become a theory for you. It's like you've just got to get in and do it. Like that, like you can you can stuff around all you like about it, but at the end of the day, until you actually go into your feeling and go with it, you're not going to get to the sun. That's what she's saying. You it's you know, Horace over here, you know, my learned counsel here is very clever with what he says, but it's a trap. You really need to clear out the emotional energy to get to the sun. Okay, so what would Horace say in response to this? Okay, so he's saying, well, that's fine. 
But the reality about this is that, that the emotional happiness is there, but the reason that it can't be achieved at the moment is that the person, you are not grounded yet. You haven't defined what happiness looks like. And to some degree, that's where they're sort of agreeing with each other because they're both saying that maybe some programming or something from the past has told you what happiness should be. But, but Horace is saying you need to really think about it in the 3D and manifest it in the 3D. You haven't done that yet. And maybe because you don't want to hurt the feelings of others or if it was a family-related thing, it's very strongly ingrained in you. But he's saying that that leaves you feeling alone and makes you feel like you can't really ground and activate what you want to do. You feel a bit isolated. In fact, he's saying that the more you go into this sort of just surrendering to feeling, the more you fear the sort of sense of ultimately being alone. So Bridget is saying it can open up your optimism. He's saying, you know, there's a risk it'll do the opposite. You really do need to define it first. You do need to know what this is going to look like materially for you. There's been a very strong, I would say, probably paternal influence on this or authority figure with a kind of on the, the continuum masculine sort of energy. So there's, I think he's also saying in that masculine feminine that there is you, you have maybe listened to and followed the masculine side of your internal balance more and you need to get towards the feminine as well. So he's saying that there's something to be said for what St. Bridget is saying, but, it, but the problem as far as he's concerned is you don't yet know what that looks like for you. Like, it's almost like you could say, well, you can do what she wants, but you need to do this first. So the two, the two learned councils have had their argument. Let's ask what the divine would say as judge over this, which is not to tell you what the answer is, but what, what perspective would the judge bring having, having listened to and watched both arguments? Okay, the judge would say, look, you know what's really going on here and whatever this is, whether it's about a relationship, and I think many of you, this is about relationship and, and how you love and who you love and all that kind of thing. But, you know, if it's about creativity or anything, the same thing applies. He says that both counsel here have a point. They absolutely have a point because there is some cleansing out of emotional energy from the past and disappointment for the past that's necessary. And the mind... But the mind also does need to be satisfied about this. At the moment, the mind is agitated because of the heart. So that's true. But I think he says that ultimately, by looking at what is materially the type of outcome that you want, you're more likely to get to the balance in the end. So I think he's tilting towards Horus, but he's saying, Horus, there is, there is truth to what Bridget is saying. There is emotional stuff that needs to be sorted out. So... It may be that, that Horace's take this first and then move to that brings about the right outcome. But don't think it's only about the material. It's only about the structure, the, the money, the, you know, whether it's a live-in relationship or not, or anything like that, depending upon the situation. It is important to confront what ne needs to be cleansed. So, so I think the judge has been quite even-handed in this. So let's see what the wild cards were. So there were two oracle decks that I pulled a wild card for you for this reading, for the archangel that brought you to this reading. So it's just maybe some other perspectives that may either show a bit more of this or maybe a different way of looking at it that's worth thinking about. So we've got the Garden of the Night and we've got Sharing. Sorry, I just moved that a bit because... I got a knock on the door. I don't know if you heard it. <laughs> so I'm back again. Anyway, so the Garden of the Night and sharing. The Garden of the Night is about solitary contemplation. It is about contemplation. It feels sort of more like Horus over here, but it is to get to the heart. So it may be the bridge between what St. Bridget is saying and what Horus is saying here. You need to take a little bit of time out to contemplate and to align potentially with the moon cycles. There may be a kind of intuitive energy that's coming to you. But I equally, and why I'd moved this when I came back, um, was because I was thinking about the fact that the Six of Coins, which is about reciprocity and sharing, was underneath this. I do feel that there is something very significant about the material outcomes of whatever this is the capacity to create a mutually sharing reciprocal mutually 
beneficial, mutually accepting type of environment, relationship, community, whatever it is. So this, I think, this is saying the perspective shift you can get by going within and working out what you really emotionally want helps you to do that. So the strange thing about this is it sort of says they're both right, but it sort of says it's a matter of degree. It's sort of saying <clears throat> you do need to go within emotionally, not necessarily you jump right in and do whatever this is and feel it and then hope that it works out. But you need to almost contemplate, meditate on what that would feel like, because that will help you to then do what Horace is, is suggesting, which is to work out, does that feel like it's going to take me to this space? Because this is where you want to be, I would say, in whatever this is, a relationship, a career choice, whatever it is, you want to be at a point that feels like it's materially good, it's generous, it's mutually supportive, it's accepting, it's balanced. So it's it's... It's sort of like you start with a bit of that, you do a bit of that, and then you can probably jump fully into that, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's get a little bit of other information for you. Let's firstly get some astrological information. Twelfth house and the fourth house. Okay. So the 12th house very much fits with this Garden of the Night feeling. The 12th house is what's really at the depth psychology level for you, <clears throat> what is really deeply within and what is private to you. So there is, there is a kind of necessity for some time out and private contemplation. And there's an impact of this. The 4th house is both who you are in the world and it's also who you are at home. So there's something about this that has an impact on either immediate or longer term sort of relationships, family environments, home environments, or who you want to be at your very base level. So that's why it's important to go within first, then to work out materially, because the fourth house in many ways is very material. It's like it is hearth and home. It is it is what you manifest in a way in your life and, and, and the sense of longevity and stability that most seek in the fourth house matters. So it's it's sort of showing that that is a very important part of whatever this is. Okay, so let's use another deck that has astrology, moon, archetypal, symbolic sort of energy to see what other advice Spirit wants to bring to this question. Libra, Leo, and Metatron's cube. Wow, okay. So Libra is about balance, and there is something about balance in all of this. And Libra is a very intellectual card. So again, it's tilting a little bit towards the intellect here, or, or certainly saying even if you start with contemplating, going emotional, working out the material, don't forget the intellectual. You are very much a head-oriented person, and you do need to make sure you feel it is balanced theoretically. But then you can take the action. Then you can then you can do whatever this is because you've you've gone through that process and you're comfortable with it intellectually. There is a hell of a lot of divine knowledge that is coming to you, you know, that Horus sort of wisdom and intention and so forth. Metatron is the archangel associated with Keta in the Kabbalah, so the divine mind. It is the scribe of the divine mind. So in many ways, it is you starting to write your own story, write your own reality, write who you are. And that's probably why you need to start with internal contemplation of what it might feel like, but not actually experiencing it, working out then what that means materially, and then taking the action. Because this is about you really fully having the intention that Horus says. I think, I think that a lot of this is tilting towards, towards a flow between the two options in a particular order rather than one or the other. So I hope that that makes sense for you. But to get right to the core, let's do the yes-no questions. So there's two different ways that I do yes-no questions. Sometimes I do them where it's only a type of question where you have the control of, of what you do, whether it's yes or no, and it's how it feels for those. So it's not telling you which to do or anything. It's just giving you a sense of what those feel like. That's not the way I'm doing it this way. This time it's much more around a yes-no question that could be anything. It could be, is this person going to contact me? Is... Um, am I going to get this job offer? You know, is this going to happen in an X timing or whatever? So when I do these, when I draw a major arcana card or in the minor arcana, a wands or a cups, the answer is yes. 
when I draw a court card or a sword or a pentacle from the minor arcana? The answer is no. And then we have a look at what the card is too to see what other information there is. So we're going to do this three times. So now as I shuffle, can you think of your first question related to this? Okay, and the answer is no, because we have a swords card. And I think it's saying that, that you're not yet at the point. Six of swords is having the peace of mind to go forward. I think it is saying whatever this question is, you probably don't have all the information you need or you haven't gone through this kind of process that's being talked about yet. You're not ready yet to take the decision and move forward. All right. And if it's about somebody else doing it, then... There's something about this answer that you have to sort out and have peace of mind about and, and actually just take in as a piece of information for, for part of how you determine this. All right, ask about the second question while I shuffle. Okay, and the answer is no again. And it's interesting we're getting swords. This very much is tilting to the fact that, that you do... You do both of these are kind of, this one's saying, you know, think about the material and she's thinking about the fire and the, the water. But, you know, you do actually have to make your mind feel okay. That's too much who you are. And it's too much about how you get your balance. So, so there's a degree to which both of the angels aren't fully understanding something that's core to you. But there's, a, there's something around a battle with this particular question. There's been a battle or there's some losses or some calculated risks that are associated with it. And whatever the question is, no, is taking into account that. All right. And the last question, please. Think about that while I shuffle for the third time. And the answer is no again. Okay, so I don't know. That's three no's in a row. I'm not really sure what in particular things. And if they seem to be going in different directions, it may be simply a similar thing here where it's not that the answer is no full stop. It might be about timing and about the order in which you do things because this seems to be what this whole reading is about. But certainly part of the reason for the no is that there isn't the material longevity yet associated, which might be why Horace is right about the fact that you need to work out what materially you want. So if this was a question about, do I take this job? The answer might be no, because it doesn't have the longevity that you need, for instance. If it's, do I invest in this particular thing? Again, it may not have the longer term results that you were looking for if the answer is no. But if your answer was, do I leave this job at this point in time, then the, and the answer was no, it might be because it has longer term prospects than you expect. Now, do remember... Um, and I'm feeling particularly drawn to, to point this out when there's three no's in a row, that this is a collective reading and it may well be that, that none of these really connect with what you're doing. If it doesn't feel right to you when you contemplate, don't worry so much about this. However, if it does feel right to you, take what the, the answers are as, as one's questions that were meant to align with you. Okay, Palfo, I hope that that makes sense. It is a little bit of a bet each way for you, but I think it is really more about the order in which you do things, not whether you do one thing or another. And just making sure that you contemplate the feeling around it, you think about how to manifest it, and then that you make sure that it fits with your principles, values, and your beliefs about the world. You can't go too wrong if that's the case. You, you're very, very strongly connected. But as I say, if all these no's it's, are around actions at the moment, it might just be around the order in which you do things as opposed to it. So even if it was, do I take this job? It might not, it might be no for now, but it might not be no in the longer term, for instance, depending upon whether you've sorted some of the other stuff out. So I hope that that resonates for you. I hope you enjoyed the reading. If so, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you care to share in the comments, I'd love to hear about how this worked for you. Beyond that, I hope to see you in future readings.